Welcome to News Beats on Internet Television International, that's ITI. We're reaching you from Abuja studio in Nigeria. My name is Christine Opara. First, the headlines. Atahi Rujega emerges as INEC chairman. Jonathan launches education campaign. Calm resumes in Joss Metropolis. Details in a bit. The National Council of State has accepted the appointment of Professor Atahi Rujega as the new INEC chairman. The council collectively approved the proposal by President Goodluck Jonathan, who commended the courage he demonstrated in the appointment. The Council of State described Atahi Rujega as someone who was not known to have political affiliation. Governor of Edo State Comrade Adam Zoshiamale, while airing his opinion, said Professor Jega has distinguished himself in his calling and that the council was satisfied with the nomination. Also approved were the nomination of 10 new national commissioners and 18 state resident electoral commissioners. These appointments were made public after a six-hour meeting by the council, anchored by President Goodluck Jonathan in Abuja. The council also commended President Jonathan on the choice he made, describing the people selected as men and women of reliability. The Council of State then conferred President Goodluck Jonathan with the nation's highest national award, the Grand Commander of the Federal Republic. In attendance at the council meeting were some former heads of state, General Ibrahim Babangida, Chief Ernest Shunakon, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, Al Haji Shehu Shigari, and Chief Olushe Gwabasanjo. Senate President David Mark, three retired justices of the Federation, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Dimeji Bankale, and many of the governors of the 36 states of the Federation were also in attendance. Professor Atahi Rujega, who is currently the Vice Chancellor of Bayero University, Kano, is known for his active participation when he was the President of the Academic Staff Union of Universities in the 1990s. Professor Jega effectively tackled the military government of General Ibrahim Babangida in the late 1990s. Incidentally, when he was ASU President, Professor Maurice Wu was the Deputy President of the Association. He became the Vice Chancellor of the Bayero University Kano in 2005. Jega was also a member of the Justice Uwais Electoral Reform Committee. Professor Jega is anticipated to bring vast assurance and integrity to an electoral body that has suffered very severe credibility crisis in the last few years. Jega, a professor of political science, replaces Professor Maurice Iwu as the INEC chairman. President Goodluck Jonathan yesterday in Yola inaugurated the campaign for access to education with a clarion call on stakeholders in the education sector to guarantee its successful execution. Goodluck Jonathan, represented by Vice President Namad Sambo, said it signaled the beginning of the realization of the education roadmap recently accepted by the Federal Executive Council. Jonathan described the exercise as timely. He also said the government was putting in place the education sector for global best practices and competitiveness. He said the aim would be achieved through increased funding from annual budgets, the Universal Basic Education Commission's intervention funds, and Education Trust Fund. He therefore urged stakeholders to address the challenges facing the education sector. Residents and citizens of Plato State can now move around without fear as normalcy and peace have returned to just capital of Plato State and profitable activities have resumed. After some resistance from a section of motorcycle operators protested the ban on motorcyclists in the state. Security operators have been assigned to different parts of the state and they are patrolling the streets as business activities have fully resumed. Assistant Inspector General of Police Donald O'Hakim, while inspecting the Bongwong Palace where the rioters made a move to burn, warned parents to control their children and not to take laws in their hands. O'Hakim promised residents that since the law prohibiting motorcycle from commercial activities has been signed, the police will ensure its enforcement as directed by the government. Mr. O'Hakim warned that the police will not allow the state to be turned to a crisis infested area with people who intentionally break the law. In a recent development, the Plato State Government is already working out ways to mitigate effects of the ban on motorcyclists for commercial purposes within Joss and Bukuru areas of the state. State Commissioner for Information and Communications Gregory Yen Long said that government has provided buses for civil servants at various designations as part of reducing the effect while other ways are being put in place. The Plato State House of Assembly last month passed the law prohibiting the use of motorcycles popular 
formerly called Okada, for commercial purpose within just Bukuru Metropolis that covers the just master plan. Consequently, Governor Jonah Jang accepted the law with enough grace of over a month to all commercial motorcyclists in the state to brace up to the new development. Meanwhile, the national president amalgamated commercial motorcycle owners and riders association of Nigeria, Babangida Maihula, appealed to government to provide alternatives, especially in the area of employment, for the youth that will be unemployed as a result of the ban. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, yesterday filed fresh fraud charges involving 1.7 billion naira against six principal officers of the Kogi state government before a federal high court sitting in Abuja. The accused persons are the People's Democratic Party governorship aspirant and currently Commissioner for Agriculture, Chief Samuel Abiodojo, and a senatorial aspirant in Kogi West and currently Commissioner for Local Governments and Chieftaincy Affairs, Chief Tolorunjumwa Joseph Fani. They are accused of diverting another 1.7 billion naira following fresh discoveries in the anti-graft agency's investigations. The six government officials were said to have misappropriated funds in the discharge of functions assigned to them. Others are Malam Enesi Jimo Sulaimon, who is the former Commissioner for Agriculture in the state, Mr. Stephen Rokpo Asala, Obaro Victor Kayode and Yaya Abubakar, Chairman of Yagba West, Yagba East and Okene local government areas respectively. Counsel to EFC Sikunle Wahab Shitu, who brought the fresh 29 count criminal charges against the accused persons, told Justice Okorowo that the Anti-Graft Commission was fully prepared to prosecute the case following more discoveries in the investigation. In the fresh criminal charge, the governorship aspirant who until lately was finance commissioner was alleged to have defrauded the state government of 150 million naira. In the same vein, the chairman of Okene Local Government Council, Yahaya Abubakar, was alleged to have defrauded the council of 634.4 million naira. The rest accused persons were alleged to have conspired and diverted 939 million naira to their pockets. And it's good news for all intending pilgrims as the Nigerian Christian Pilgrim Commission says no more shabu treatment of its pilgrims. At an opening bid ceremony conducted by the Commission for Airliners Carriers for 2010 Christian Pilgrimage to Israel and Rome, the Commission led by its chairman, Most Reverend Nicholas D. Oko, says no plane older than a year will be allowed to lift any passenger to the Holy Lands. Our correspondent, Shayo Adebumi, was there and now reports. The Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Christian Pilgrimage Commission, Mr. John Opara, in his welcome address, said services to be rendered by the airline must be in compliance with modern safety standards as certified by the International Civil Aviation Organization regulation. We are all aware airlifting of pilgrims to the Holy Land is central to the entire success of any pilgrimage operation. However, our experiences in the past have shown that most bidders do not usually meet with the basic requirements, such as their inability to reach agreement with a lessor to at least to, to them the Commission's aircraft specifications. At times, they are unable to provide the specified aircraft for our operation. We cannot compromise our standard. The, specific, the specifications are very clear, and we tend to keep it. In the chairman's keynote address, most Reverend Nicholas D. Oka said the Commission is grateful to President Mr. Goodluck Jonathan, who then as the Vice President showed interest in the welfare of the Commission. He said the Commission started the lifting of passengers with new airplanes and would not accept anything less. And we don't intend to continue to go on with anything less. We want to say that air business travel is a tricky business and we do not intend to put our people uh, in danger in any way. And so those who have come to bid for uh, this business should please take note that we started with an aircraft that was one year old. And we are not going to go back. We are going to keep within that range. The chairman for the said the commission intends to match beauty with technicalities. So let beauty match technicality. The safety of passengers is very important. Honorable Carlo Uduma, Chairman House Committee on Aviation, was at the ceremony. Shayo Adebumi reporting for ITI. And that's our take on news bits. I'm Christine Opera.
Thanks for logging on.